Miami University using a generous $30 million donation. We'll tell you more about the donor and how students will benefit. But first, find out why parents are voicing concerns about how the current Talawanda Athletic Department is being run. Welcome to Oxford Weekly News. I'm Isabel Hansen. Talawanda High School spring sports are in full swing, but this hasn't stopped some community members and parents from voicing concerns about the school's athletic department. From low student participation numbers to the coaching staff, these community members want change. I spoke with the school's athletic director and a student athlete's parent to hear both sides of the story. Michael Wright, father of three Talawanda student athletes and previous high school head football coach of seven years, helped start the community unified for the advancement of Talawanda athletics. We want to see kind of the pride come back where um, the stands are filled on Friday nights at the football game. Um, you know, the basketball stands, you, you standing room only because you can't get in there. Um, those are the things that we want to see as a community because those are the things that we want to see all the kids in the district exposed to. Wright and his group say lack of community support and poor performance of coaches are among the issues. The biggest problem... We have to figure out why we have kids who um, aren't continuing to play uh, from their freshman year through, your, through their senior years. According to documents sent by Tommy Crank, another founding member with Wright's group, participation in football, baseball, basketball, and softball declined by over 70% over the past four years. Wes Cole, Talawanda High School Athletic Director, says the school's official numbers show a different trend. I feel we're in a good place. I mean, overall, when you look at our um, athletic department, I mean, we've had good participation. Um, and it's been steady for the last at least four years. According to Cole, 575 student athletes participate in the current 2017-2018 season. That is 23 students more than during the 2014-2015 season. We have to continue to focus on the fact that we are trying to improve something in the Talawanda School District and we're trying to improve it for all the students and all the athletes. It's not about one particular kid. It's not about one particular coach. Um, it's about the entire organization. Wright says this is not an issue with Talawanda School's amount of money in the bank. We have over $25 million in the bank. Um, we can pay coaches when we find good quality coaches if that's what it, we need to do to make it right for our kids. Moving forward, Wright wants to work with the school to make a change. I wasn't given any opportunity. We never met or had anyone you know, address things that, were, that, were, that they felt were a concern. So um, you know, we're always open and willing to, to make things the best they can. Cole says he was first made aware of community members' thoughts at the Talawanda Board of Education meeting on Monday, March 26. You, you never feel good if there's concerns about things. You know, I, I take a lot of pride in our athletic department and, you know, I want to make sure that we, we take care of our student athletes. That's our, our number one goal is to provide them with the best opportunities that we can. You know, I feel we're doing this. Looking at the issue of declining participation numbers, school officials tell me their numbers are from final form, a student record system not accessible to the public. Officials are unaware of how the contradicting outside accounting was done. The community unified for the advancement of Talawanda Athletics is holding an open forum on Sunday, April 8th at 6 p.m. for parents and community members to share their thoughts and experiences. The forum will be at Milford Township Community Center. Substance use in the Talawanda School District is on the decline according to a 2018 drug-free community student survey. The survey was released on March 27th following a monthly school board meeting. The district says it is pleased that according to survey results, most students are not using and are maintaining a drug, alcohol, and tobacco free life. Miami University student Matthew Malakow was arrested March 13th for receiving a package containing half of a kilogram of MDMA, also known as Molly. The overseas shipment of Molly was intercepted by the Butler County Undercover Narcotics Task Force at Matthew Malakal's home at 320 North Poplar. Malakal was released from the Butler County Jail. They received uh, information from the Postal Inspector Service um, that uh, Homeland Security investigations had intercepted a package from overseas 
that was coming to Oxford that contained um, ecstasy or molly, a purer form of ecstasy. And uh, so working in cooperation with them, uh, they did a controlled delivery of the package to this location in Oxford. The street value of this amount of molly is over $40,000. Officers also found LSD, hash oil, and marijuana packaged for sale in Malakal's room. University officials say that he is still enrolled at Miami. Miami student Ron Yan was arrested April 1st for domestic violence in his dorm at Ogden Hall. Yan is a sophomore East Asian Languages and Culture student. University officials say that Yan remains enrolled as a student, but did not say whether he faces university discipline. A week after public protests took place on campus, the Black Action Movement has created a list of 10 demands to address what it calls racial discrimination and violence on Miami's campus. The list of demands included the following, construction for a new space for the Office of Diversity Affairs, increase in recruiting more racially diverse students, faculty, and staff, and revising the discrimination harassment section of the Code of Conduct. Claire Wagner, Director of News and Communications, released a statement regarding the university's response to the demands. After the final round of voting on Tuesday, April 3rd, junior Megan Murtag was elected as Miami's next student body president. Murtag has served in ASG since her freshman year, and she says she is looking forward to the upcoming school year. ASG is where I found my family and where I found my niche. So I'm super excited to give back to Miami University, the place that became my home. Murtag's running mate, Vincent Smith, will serve as ASG vice president. In 2018, Miami University Counseling saw a nearly 3% increase in students using their services. This data comes as preliminary insights from the 2018 Miami Student Health Survey released by Student Affairs. The survey covered sexual misconduct, alcohol use, and mental health. The survey, which ran from February 28th to March 14th, received responses from almost 4,000 students. Students in the College of Arts and Sciences with financial need will soon have more scholarships available to them, thanks to a $30 million donation by Miami alum David Defoe. Defoe graduated in 1984 with a degree in zoology. Since graduating, he has formed Flavor Man, a business that creates flavors that are used by companies like Ocean Spray and Sunsweet. Coming up on Oxford Weekly News, find out how the Oxford Community Trails may benefit from the May 2nd election. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Why is the May 2nd election so important in the Oxford community? Voters can decide whether or not they want to pay more, ta more in taxes in exchange for an expansion of the Oxford City Trail System. In the past, the May election hasn't been as popular in Oxford as the November election. This year, after a tax levy made its way on the May ballot, Oxford community members are encouraged to get out and vote. Jessica Green, Executive Director of Local Visitors Bureau, Enjoy Oxford, is enthusiastic about the tax levy, but recognizes some of the potential pitfalls. But yes, taxes will go up. Unfortunately, I'm not saying I'm a big fan of big taxes either, but I honestly could not think of any other way to apply for grants and have the required matching dollars when we're talking about millions of dollars of matching funds. The tax levy is for the Oxford Area Trail System, which is a 12-mile, 10-foot-wide, multi-use path that will circle around Oxford. The trail will also include spokes to get into key points around town. The goal is to increase recreation opportunities and provide active transportation across the Oxford community. If the tax levy is approved by voters during the May 2nd election, Oxford property owners will have an increase in their property taxes. Specifically, $100 per every $100,000 of property will be required. However, the tax levy doesn't mean property owners have to pay increased property tax forever. I laughed 
I said, you guys, I turned 40. I want this done by the time I turn 50. They took me quite literally, because on the map it says 2028 and it will be completed. But that's what I'm most excited about is moving from beyond a piecemeal approach to a fully planned whole trail system approach of planning and implementation. Oxford City Council member Edna Southard also feels the tax levy would benefit Oxford. I hope people aren't afraid of it, you know, because I think it'll, all these amenities are going to improve their property values. So in the long run, it's a good investment. According to Oxford Economic Director Alan Kiger, grants won't be able to pay entirely for the $3.2 million investment towards completing the Oxford Trails. The hope is that matching grants will indirectly be able to pay for the entire trail. Um, typically, Oxford is supportive of um, levies because, again, they understand to get services, you have to pay for services. You have to pay. Oxford community members are encouraged to vote on issue number two during the May 2nd election. Back to you, Isabel. The Oxford City Council approves plans for a new playground gifted to the city by McCullough Hyde Hospital. The playground structure will be installed at the Leonard Howell Park on Bonham Road. TriHealth has pledged $23,000 towards the cost of construction. The city hopes a new playground will bring community members back to the newly renovated park and trail. Coming up on Oxford Weekly News, find out how students are taking advantage of a newly relocated and larger learning center. And also, are you looking for something fun to do with your dog? There is a new obstacle course in town to bring your dog to. students are seeking tutoring help than before thanks to Ranella Learning Center's prime new location. Ranella moved from the Campus Avenue building to the Schreiber Center at the beginning of 2017. Since then, the number of students taking advantage of Ranella services has climbed from about 800 students in the fall of 2015 to over 1,000 this semester. If you're having a hard time deciding where to donate outgrown and gently used clothing, here is an option. Students from the Progressive Christian Faith Group brought to campus a clothing drive for the homeless youth and LGBTQ in Hamilton County. Abby Von Gorder, one member from the Clothing Drive Partnership, says this event is a great practice of serving the community. And it's a great way also to just break out of the Oxford bubble on occasion and um, to provide service and give to those in need in the greater Cincinnati area um, to be a part of that bigger community. Collection is running from now until next Friday, April 13th. Collection boxes can be found in Hannah House, Center for Career Services, and the Women's Center in Armstrong Building. If you're a dog owner, there will soon be a new way for your dog to get exercise at the North Side Dog Park. Architecture students in the Freedom by Design Club at Miami are installing an obstacle course at the dog park. Emily Waldinger, the director of the Freedom by Design Club, says that the dog park is a place where Miami students and Oxford natives collide. The dog park is a place where people from the Oxford community and uh, you know the people that live here all the time and then also us students uh, can kind of merge. We seem to be a little segregated sometimes, sadly, and I think that the dog park has been a place that I've seen those two worlds come together and uh, connect with each other. Freedom by Design is looking for volunteers to help install the obstacle course on April 8th and April 12th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Lunch will be provided. That's all for this week. Thanks for joining us. I'm Isabel Hansen. You can watch us on our Oxford Weekly News YouTube channel. Also, connect with us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Search Oxford Weekly News.